Hello folks, it's me again, it's Victor First Bonnington, this is part 2 of the two part updated instruction video set for the Hands of Omega console line. Now, before we go any further, a couple of people have asked me a simple question, has the button layouts for the consoles changed? No, they haven't. If you're used to a particular console, don't worry, the power prim is still the power prim, the flight prim is still the flight prim, etc, etc. What's changed is the scripting that runs the console. And basically, the benefits are twofold. Number one, the console in the HUD reacts a lot more quicker than it used to. And number two, the overall script time of the console has been literally halved. The old script time for the older Hands of Omega system pre-update was roughly 0.2-ish milliseconds on average. Sometimes it was 0.19-ish, which is still bloody good. But the new updated consoles are running at 0.08 on average, judging by this particular console. Depends how many scripts is in the console itself as well. If you've got the pod TARDIS, which has got less scripts in it, not much less, mind you, but slightly less scripts in it, it'll run slightly lower. But on average, across the entire board, all the console script times have been halved, which is a good thing. Really, it is. It's a good thing. So... The first major change. For this next thing to work, or the next thing I'm going to show you, you're going to have to have a client, a viewer basically, which is RLV compatible. Now, the general rule is if you're using the standard Second Life client that's downloaded from the Second Life website, you will not be RLV compatible. But if you are using the Emerald client, or another third-party client that's been approved by Linden Labs, of course, that's got RLV in it, switch on RLV in your Emerald viewer or your other client, and then click, left-click, on your Stantheim remote control and choose Key. Click on RLV on. That will switch on RLV for your console. I'm going to show you what happens next. I'm going to land the console down below in the Millennium Center. Like so. Choose the police box and waiting at landing. Here we go. So we've opened the doors. Now originally what you had to do if you had the starting remote control attached, you walked into the doors and the map popped up in your face. Not really good, you know, you've got to have that kind of imagination in your head of walking through the doors and you immediately land inside the police box and you don't have to press a teleport button on a map. Well, guess what? With RLV-enabled viewers and RLV switched on in the starting remote control, you can do this. From the console, to the police box, with no map pop-up. Absolutely no map pop-up at all. From the police box, to the console... Had to bump it there, I'm recording this in Katrina, and there's people teleporting in and out, so it's a little bit laggy. But yeah, from the police box to the console, again, with absolutely no map pop-up. That is the essence of the RLV system. No map pop-up. So you basically walk into the door prim and you're immediately teleported straight into the exterior. Walk into the exterior and you're immediately teleported, barring lag, straight into the console. That's the first difference or the first addition that's happened to the console system. The next addition is the scanner system, not the scanner screen which is the big television up there, but the avatar scanner system. On the Pert Wii console it's the grey button right there. So if I click on that, I get the usual options on off, in flight on, in flight off, position and distance, but there's a new one there called Parcel Info, which is very very handy. If you click on Parcel Info, it gives you a quick overview overview of the permissions that's on the parcel, the prims that are free that's on the parcel, the parcel time, and the parcel wind speed, and the parcel name. It's a little weather report of where you're about to land. Very handy to have, actually. Yeah, very handy to have. The next addition that's happened 
is the phasing system. Now if you clicked on the key button in your HUD, you'll have noticed two new buttons in there as well, phase on, phase off. This is what the phase system does, but we're going to do it from the console itself. The old HADS or temporal grace button on your console, click on it and you'll notice a new option in there called phase on, phase off. If you click on phase on, this happens. Recognise that sound? So, it's apparently taken off and landed for no apparent reason. Right, let's click on that again and click on phase off. To get an idea of what just happened, we're going to have to head back down to the exterior itself. So, here we are, back downstairs, where the exterior's landed, and what we're going to do, we're going to switch on RLV, or not RLV, we're going to switch on phase from the HUD. So here we go, phase on. That was a quick takeoff, but the exterior is still there. I'm going to right click and edit, and I don't know if you can see this in the video, you probably can't, but the exterior is actually still there, it's just turned invisible, and not only invisible, it's also phantom, so people can walk past this exterior all day long and not even know it's there. To bring it back, click on key, click on phase off, and the exterior's back again. If you want to go undercover in a sim and not let people know you're actually a Time Lord, instead of having to take off and go through all the rigmarole of doing a remote land again, just click Phase On, and it'll simply hide your exterior. The other subtle difference here, if I open the doors up and cam in, hear that? The console hum is now embedded in the police box. And it doesn't matter what console you use, the console hum for the Pertwee is different for the console hum for the new series. This police box will play the console hum from your particular police box, from your particular console. So that's that bit covered. The next is another little subtle difference that's been added. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to take off, like so. And now I'm going to hit the power button to power the console off. But before I do this, originally what happened was when you powered the console off, the lights switched off and the walls dimmed down. And that was basically it. But now what happens is this. Power off. Everything shuts down now. Power is literally off. No hum, no noise, and if your rotor was in flight, guess what? It's now not in flight, because you've switched the power off. There has been loads and loads of other little additions into the menu systems, the biggest one being the flight system. The flight system is now categorised. Instead of the all database showing up every single public database, page after page after page of it, now it's in categories. Role play social and shops. That's the only three categories there is. Keeps things nice and simple. So if you've got a role play reser, put it under role play. If you've got a shop, put your public reser under shop. And if you've got a social club, like a club or something like that, put it under social. One word of warning though, unlike the old system where it wasn't really policed, the new public database will be enforced. If you put a public reser down under roleplay, your public reser and your roleplay area will be checked by representatives of House Arcalian, which is one of the roleplay groups which is taking part in the hands of Omega roleplay. If you are putting down a shop, no, not a shop, if you're putting down a social reser, again, 
your resin will be lightly checked not heavily checked but lightly checked to make sure you've actually put it in a social place if you're putting down a resin in a shop yeah it's a shop um, there'll basically be no checking it'll be just opened up you know you can game the system all you want but again word of warning if you game the system in the shops category people will basically hate your guts and want to rip your head off simple as that there's been lots of changes folks the only thing I can suggest is this video can only cover so much of it. You have got to read the manual. The manual is a lot bigger now compared to the old one, but the reason it's bigger is there's a lot more new stuff to play around with. And if you don't read the manual, you're going to miss out on a lot of the fun. Anyway, that's it from me, folks.